My guest at this time, the very, very talented singer and musician. Her new current single right now is Salvador. It's coming out her hot single, uh, Fault Lines, that came out this past February. So you check out both. Both of them are available right now. Wherever you get your music, Holly Abadi is on with us right now. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. It's kind of an interesting time to put out a single. I think people are starting to come out a little bit as well. I mean, what was it? Well, first of all, tell me a little bit what it was like to, you know, make these two singles, you know, and kind of the process that you went through. I mean, in quarantine, it was definitely very interesting. Um, it's been difficult, too, because I'm trying to balance, like, doing music and school. So we've been having a lot of sessions with writers um, here locally in Arizona. I haven't really been able to fly out to L.A. to do this. But it's been great. I mean... We've been writing the music virtually and recording it safely. So it's been, it's been great. Well, considering, you know, a lot, I mean, back in the day, you had to be kind of in studio in order to do it. You had to be in a a studio with the musicians, with everybody. But nowadays you can just record wherever you basically, basically please a lot of the big, big major cities do have recording studios that you could probably do your part versus the uh, instrumentals and all that as well. I mean, how's, how's that, how was that for you to kind of get everything kind of together that way? Exactly. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, we've just been doing it at my producer's house and it's really low key and don't have to run into a lot of people. It's just me and him. So it's, it's a very intimate process and uh, you know, it's been great. Was this the first time that you, you've ever been in a studio and, and, you know, working on a single like this? No, I've, I've been, um, my first single, I think I released in 2018. So I've been doing it for a few years now. And usually we fly out and, and we're with a bunch of people and people are coming in and out of the studio. So it's been kind of nice to pull back and then have it just be us. No distractions. Tell me a bit about that first time in the studio versus now. Did you learn a lot between those experiences? Oh, for sure. For sure. It's, it's incredible. I think when I first started recording, I was like 16. And so I like didn't know how to use my voice to my advantage. I was still kind of a newbie at trying to write with writers. And I was like, is this good? Is this cheesy? Trying to come up with like good lyrics. So it's, it's done a full 180, I think. And just knowing how to use my voice and my tone and be more expressive. And yeah, it's been completely different than when I was 16. Tell me a little bit about the recording process. You know, a lot of times, I mean, most of the time, the way it happens is the vocals go in last. And, you know, they, they maybe start from the bottom up, like the drums and the, and, the, um, and the instrumentals and all that as well. But tell me a little bit about the process that you went through. I mean, typically how we like to do it is we'll just uh, have an idea, have a mood for the night. And my producer will start laying down some sounds. And then I'll write with uh, whoever, whether it's myself or um, other writers around me. We'll start writing and then once we find something good we'll go and record it and so that is probably the easiest way to do it um i don't do well with like or at least in the past i haven't done well with re-recorded tracks and trying to write to that it's more organic when you're writing as the track is being produced during that process obviously you know you probably come in with an idea you said tell me that you know you have like a notebook that you keep with you with some lyrics or maybe some ideas that you um have and then you just kind of basically flesh it out when you get into these sessions for sure absolutely I I don't I try not to write in my phone because I feel like my phone kind of like takes out all the creativity so I try and write like on I always have like a paper and pencil that I write with something going on in my life maybe a boy troubles maybe uh (laughs) something different and uh go in and, and try to express that the best way I can so I always come in with something about, about how many of those notebooks do you have? Oh gosh, I have a lot. And some of them are from when I'm, when I was like 14, 15 and I go back and read them and I'm like, God, that was a horrible song. And I thought it was so good at the time, but I have a lot. I have a lot that I still use and still write in now. Well, it goes with experience too, you know, when you, when you get a little bit older, but maybe, maybe some of those ideas could spark something, you know, you never know. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I still read them. I'm like, okay, there's still something worthwhile in here, I think. You know, roughly how long has it, how fast has it been? What's your fastest song that you've probably ever written? The fastest. I think my, the fastest song I've ever written is my favorite song I've ever done. And um, that's coming out later this year. It's called Without You. And it took us maybe, hmm, I want to say like max two hours. 
and uh, it was organic. I went in with wanting to do a R&B pop type feel, something different than I think the music I have out right now. And I wrote it with a, an incredible writer named Tattoo and we got it done really quickly and hopefully we'll get that one out really soon. But that was my favorite. Well, let's, let, let's take a look. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, your, your beginnings. You know, obviously you grew up very, very talented, uh, started music very, very early in your career, early in your life. Uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, some of the, some of your, uh, you know, kind of ear influences and some of the people that you were listening to early on while you were uh, learning music. I grew up on Taylor Swift one. That's how I learned how to play piano and sing at the same time is uh, my mom got me all these like Taylor Swift piano books. And that's, that's how I fell in love with like singing and, and playing. But other influences are, um, Amy Winehouse, like, I don't think we'll ever experience an artist like her again. I think she was incredible, incredibly unique, fell in love with her tone and kind of like her wittiness. And and you can feel her charisma even through her songs, even when she's singing uh, about some of the darkest topics, she still keeps it witty somehow. John Mayer is a huge influence, probably my favorite artist of all time. Uh, So I just try and take from these artists that I felt were so honest and vulnerable in their music and then try and reflect that into my own music and and try and like emulate some of that soulfulness that they have now your 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 music you know has a pretty pretty cool mix of a lot of you know maybe some some latin elements as well as pop elements as you know you're, you're starting to get some of the r&b elements as well i mean how how's it for you to kind of experiment with a lot of these styles and kind of you know you know kind of make your own twist on them it's been quite the learning process. I'm learning more and more what I like and what I don't, obviously. And, and that's sometimes hard to come to terms with, you know, that idea didn't really pan out the way I thought it would. But it's been great. Yeah, like you said, we've been experimenting with Latin instruments and uh, a lot of Middle Eastern instruments. We have some Afghan percussion in some of my music and some uh, sitar, um, which is a lute instrument. So it, it's been really fun. And I feel like I'm only just at the beginning of experimenting with with my sound I feel like there's so much more ground for me to cover so we're, we're still still working on it besides piano do you know how to, how to play any other instruments I've been trying to pick up guitar there's an electric guitar somewhere back here in my room but I've been trying uh definitely haven't put in as much effort as I need to but piano has always been my number one when I'm stressed I, that's my piano and that's the one instrument that I know how to play well Million dollar question. Do you have a name for the guitar? A name for the guitar? Yeah. Oh, I should name her. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have a name for her. You know what? Maybe that'll motivate me to play her more if I, uh, it's more personal. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's, that's great to be able to, I mean, you, you, now, now you, you, you started learning on electric, correct? I've been trying. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. A lot of the, you know, obviously a lot of guitarists use regular, regular guitar and kind of work their way over. But I think nowadays a lot more, more people are going right directly to the, uh, the electric guitar as well. But what was your process to, in, 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 in selecting that guitar? Was it a situation where you just found it in the shop and said, I absolutely love it? Or was it something that you were um, kind of, you know, shopping around for? My brother had it um, in his room. He had been, he had tried picking up the electric guitar too. He's a violin player. So uh, I was like, can I take this from you? He's like, yeah, and just take it. So <laughs> now it's just sitting here. You know, ever, ever think about putting him in a, in a song with his violin? Oh, that is a great idea. I'm gonna have to write that one down. I definitely, you know, I, I would love to incorporate violin in some of my music. It's a great idea. <laughs> well, I'm great, great, to, great to have inspired you on that as well. You know, I mean, it, it's it's great to be able to see such a, such a, such a prodigy, um, you know, kind of go through the uh, kind of go through the motions and have all the all, all the all the stuff as well. How how's it how's it been for you? I mean, especially with, you know, you were before were you, yeah, I'm assuming you were performing younger at a young age, and you know, what was it like to kind of be on stage at a younger age? And you know, before everything kind of shut down, what was it like for you to kind of have that experience being on stage? Again, I mean, quite the learning curve. I think my first performance was, I was sitting playing piano. I think it was My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. 
when I was like six. So I've been performing, I mean, really all my life. And it's always been something that is such an adrenaline rush and I'm up there and I'm like blacked out kind of, but I, I, it's such a good feeling to be up there and like see everybody's faces and kind of connect with some people that I know are connecting with me. I mean, I, I love performing. I really wish I could get to do it again really soon. So it's been kind of interesting to have to step back from that. I've been trying to use it to my advantage and and just focus on, okay, let's just create the music that you can perform eventually. So that's I've been my tactic as of now. A small stage or a large stage? Are you asking which one I prefer? Do you prefer a small stage or versus a large stage? I mean, obviously the small stages are more, more intimate versus a, a large crowd where, you know, you know, while you get a bigger uh, response, you don't necessarily always get that connection. Right. I think it definitely depends. I mean, I think a, a large stage is great for when it's very overwhelming to have just a few eyes on you, because I think people underestimate how like intimidating it can be to be in a small space and just have like a few people looking at you. For some reason, that's scarier than have, being on a, on a large stage and having like maybe like a few thousand people looking at you. So it, it depends. I mean, I, I love the experience of both. It's just how vulnerable do I want to be that night? <laughs> Yeah, you have a lot more room in a larger stage too, where you where you can go from one way, one way, one edge of the stage to the other, and you right. know just have a lot of fun and and dance a little bit as well. Right, exactly. How was it for you in in being in the I mean Arizona and the Arizona scene, the music scene down there? I mean, you know, I I don't think I've ever talked to anybody you know that has that has been a musician down in the Arizona scene at all. How can you, can you kind of describe that for me? Obviously, you're probably a little bit limited since. You know, there's some bars that won't probably let you perform, but what was it? What was it like to kind of you know grow up in that scene? It was interesting. I think it was interesting, I, especially where I grew up. I didn't grow up right in Phoenix, where I, I think I might have had some more advantages to where it was kind of a more creative environment. I grew up uh, around Cave Creek, uh, which is a, a different type of environment, and I, I think you know some opportunities were limited, so I just try to take every one that I that I could or that I knew of just partly why I moved to LA when I was 18 for college, but also to experience like, okay, how can I put myself out there more and get these opportunities that I maybe I don't have in Arizona? Was it a little bit easier for you because, you know, you, you are bilingual. I mean, you're, you're basically um, reaching out to do for two different audiences. Yeah. I mean, that, that's why I love to incorporate Middle Eastern instruments because it's kind of like paying homage to my culture. I want to include people of, I mean, I want to include all people, but I also want to reach out to Middle Eastern people and kind of show my appreciation for Middle Eastern and Afghan sounds. And how, I mean, how's, how's it been for you to be able to share that music a little bit? Have you, have you had the opportunity to have fans, you know, outside the United States, uh, you know, maybe in the Middle East or maybe in Europe or, you know, tell me a little bit about that and see if did you have any, any influence outside the United States. Yeah, it's been so, it's, it's been awesome. Uh, I love when I see like fans from uh, Germany or Morocco reach out, Jordan, you know, a majority of people who listen to my music are in the US, but there's a good chunk of people who are also international. And I just love, it, it just, it, it blows my mind to think that there's someone in I don't know, Nepal listening to my music. I'm like what, how did, how did that happen? <laughs> Yeah, you know, you'd be in, yeah, it's interesting to hear. I mean, I, I you know, I've, I've, I've been interviewed country artists on the show and they've, you know, had hits in South Africa or um, mm-hmm. there's, uh, you know, they've had hits in Sweden where, you know, uh, you'd never think that the, the country would, would be a, a huge deal, but it is. So it's kind of interesting to see kind of some of the, some of the cultures and what, what they have, you know, they have adopted with the music. So it's been, it's been interesting to say the least. Right. How about here locally in, in the United States? How has it been for you? Um, what's been the reaction so far to some of your music, the new music that you just came out with? The reaction has been great. For some reason, like when I check my Spotify artists, I think I've been getting a lot of local response here in like in Phoenix, Cave Creek, Scott, like all this Arizona area. So that's been interesting. I never even considered that to be like a, a target audience. But now I'm seeing a majority of my streams and, and listeners are coming from that area. And it's just, it, it's kind of nice to be appreciated, like where, I, where I'm at and where I came from. Have you been doing any performing over, over uh, social media at all or uh, doing any special concerts or anything? 
I am working on that as we speak. I think that'd be a great, <laughs> great idea. Yeah, because I know a lot of artists, so that's what